Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, Daughter of Increase. My name is Nate Denise. For those of you who are new to the channel, or who just happen to stumble across this video, and I post the videos every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, all about my faith, God, Christ, and expanding the kingdom of God. So, as the title says above, this is going to be another installation into my book look makeup tutorials, in which I take a biblical fiction or Christian fiction book cover and create a makeup look around it. Now, this is technically the first one I'm recording, but it's going to be the second one that you see, as this is for a book that is going to be coming out soon. And I'm actually posting this video this Saturday before its release date, which is cool. And um, that is going to be Daughter of Rome by Tessa Afshar. You guys know I had to do it. I read this book in one and a half days and I have so many thoughts and so many feels that I felt like I just needed to get this video out of the way, edited and set for the pre-release day. So just quickly, I'm going to show you guys. I did read it on my e-reader and here is that gorgeous cover. Do you see this cover? It is amazing. So I'm going to keep the cover here in front of me, but I'll pop it up on the screen right now for you guys. But um, yes, this is Tessa Afshar's eighth release, like I, her eighth novel. And right now I'm looking up Goodreads so that I can read the synopsis to you guys before I get into this video. But real quick, just a quick breakdown on how this video is going to go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about the synopsis with you guys. I'm then going to give you guys what I thought as far as my ratings go. Then we're going to go into a few more things, which I actually have a post-it note right here on my mirror. So we're going to talk about the characters. We're going to talk about the plot. We're going to talk about any romance involved, any relationships, period. Um, we're going to get into the faith aspects, any scriptures used, and then we are going to talk about some of my favorite quotes. And by the time I'm done with that, I should have my face already done. Um, this will be a tutorial, so I will walk with you guys through some of the products and colors that I'm using. It's not going to be a full in-depth tutorial. Um, I don't know, I'm just not into doing those kind of videos anymore for some reason. Like, I miss doing makeup tutorials, but it takes a lot of work to do them. So I figured this would be a fun way to incorporate it here on Daughter Up Increase while still showing what I love to do and do on the side as a job. But, um, yeah, so Daughter of Rome. This book will be coming out February 3rd, which is a Tuesday of 2020. So definitely, like I said, the Tuesday following this video, the book will be released. <laughs> so I'm going to quickly read the synopsis for you guys, and then we're going to dive right in with my face and talking about the book. So the synopsis says, A woman with a devastating secret, a man bent on proving his worth, a chance encounter that catapults them into the heart of history. When the daughter of a prominent Roman general meets a disinherited Jewish immigrant, neither one can dream of God's plan to transform them into the most influential couple of the early church. Nor can they anticipate the mountains that will threaten to bury them. Their courtship, unwittingly shadowed by murder and betrayal, Priscilla and Aquila slowly work to build a community of believers while their lives grow increasingly complicated thanks to a shaggy dog, a mysterious runaway, and a ruthless foe desperate for love. But when they're banished from their home by a capricious emperor, they must join forces with an unusual rabbi named Paul and fight to turn treachery into redemption. With impeccable research and vivid detail, Daughter of Rome is both an emotive love story and immersive journey through first century Rome and Corinth, reminding readers once again why Debbie McComber, I think that's how you say that, has said that no one brings the Bible to life like Tessa Afshar. So, we're going to start with this um, book look. I, I don't know what I'm doing. I just know that I want to incorporate mint, browns, and corals into this look because that's what I'm seeing on the cover. And I'm just, I'm here for it. So it's going to be something that's really subtle, can be worn every day if you guys are interested in trying this out for yourselves. I do, of course, have my tea here because we, we got to have tea in the morning. I have me some Cheetos. Don't judge me. <laughs> I have already moisturized my lips with some Vaseline. But whatever moisturizer you use, just moisturize your lips. And then I've done my eyebrows, which let me put my hair up real quick for you guys. So that it's out of my way. You guys, my edges are like, on this side is like completely falling out. Compared to that side, which is like crazy. My hair didn't fall out after I had my son. A lot of people say when you, when you have your baby, your hair falls out. That didn't happen for me. But for some reason now, my hair's falling out. I don't know what that's about. But on my eyebrows, I'm using two different eyebrow pencils. I prefer the one from Maybelline, the Maybelline eyebrow pencil, but 
I just haven't repurchased it. So I use this Wet n Wild Cold Crown Eyeliner. Um, it's called Summer Brown. Yeah, it's called Summer Brown. I don't know if it's going to show you guys, but it's from Wet n Wild. It's literally one of their like 99 cent eyebrow pencils that's really large. I use it as an eyebrow pencil. Um, I think it's really an eyeliner. I use it as an eyebrow pencil. It works. So we use it. Um, and then I'm also using the e.l.f. one as well. This one is in neutral brown. Um, so that's what I have on my eyebrows done. I normally put some clear gel over my clear mascara gel over my eyebrows. Don't have any, so we're working with it. I kind of like the way they look today. Yes, I am really actually liking it. I haven't done my makeup in a while, so I'm going to be a little bit extra, so bear with me. But, um, alright, so we're going to talk about my rating. I gave this book a 4.75 star rating because I just had too many fails. Like, way too many fails, and I couldn't decide. I don't know, there was something about the book as far as, like, the writing style. Sorry, you guys, my phone is... Here you just... go. Yeah, see? We don't need Google talking to me right now. But, um... I gave it a 4.75 star rating... Because there was something with the writing style that I couldn't connect to. And I'm just opening up my brush roll. Um, I have a bunch of brushes just squeezed into this brush roll. Let me show you guys. Very different brushes from different companies just rolled up into this brush roll. So I'm trying to find a specific brush to start on my face. Which I guess I'll go with this. Um, I'm going to use this brush here. This is from BH Cosmetics. Um, this is just a flat top brush pretty much. Um, I'm taking this primer here. It's from e.l.f. It's the Aqua Primer Mist. I actually use this on my clientele and they really love this stuff, like for real. Um, and I've used this so much. So it's an aqua primer. It's for people that have um, dry skin. It works really well. My face is already moisturized and cleansed from earlier. So normally you would spray it on your face. I'm probably just going to do that. So, And then I'm just going to Pat it in my skin. Um, and that's going to be the base for my foundation. But I always start off with my eyes. I don't know why. It's just a habit that I've gotten into um, as a makeup artist. Is to start off with the eyes and then the face to avoid any fallout from the eyeshadow. And having to clean up any extra bits. But we have that one. So again, that's the e.l.f. primer mist that I'm using. You can pick this up anywhere. I get this from my local Rite Aid for like 5 or 10 I think it's $10 or maybe $5. One of those. But e.l.f. is a really great product. Um, a, re a really great brand, excuse me. And let's move this stuff out of my way. I have brushes and makeup all over the place, so bear with me. But I, like I said, I gave it a 4.75 star rating because there was something with the writing style that I couldn't honestly connect with. I felt like I kept zoning in and out of the story. And when you guys see my reading vlog, you'll see what I'm talking about. Where you'll see me reading and then I'll get on my phone. And I'll be on my phone for a few minutes and then I'll get back to the story. Um, next, I'm taking my NYX HD eyeshadow base. It's just an eyeshadow primer. I'm just going to prime the lids with that. But yeah, I just, I don't know. There was just a disconnect for me with the story that kind of like pulled me out of it. So that's why I gave it a 4.75 star rating. And it felt very different than her usual writing for me. Um, this is just another BH Cosmetics brush that I'm using to blend it all out. But um, yeah, I just, I don't know. I just, there was a disconnect for me with the writing. Um, it was easy to read and easy to flow with. But it definitely was different for me. Um, I definitely could relate to it a little bit more. Just because this book definitely dealt with um, learning to forgive yourself. Learning to accept God's forgiveness. And also with um, abortion. Which I have dealt with. And I will do a video on that. Um, I'll do a testimony video on that. Because I have a lot to say about that. But um, you know. I had went through that and that's something that the main character had gone through so that's that's pretty much like the gist of what i felt and why i gave it what i gave it all right so we have that down what do i want to do next like i said i'm i'm running on the fly i'm just looking at the cover so we just gonna flow with it so i'm going to do my crease first um and i'm taking this eyeshadow here from lancome it's called chic it's a matte eye color from their color design and it's literally just a matte brown i love using this in my crease like so much where's my brush 
There's a specific brush that I'm looking for, and now I can't find it. Don't you love it when you are looking for things and you can't find them the minute you need them? Here it is. Okay, so I'm taking this. This is a Sigma brush, but it's just one of those brushes here. I don't really... I'm a makeup artist, but one thing I don't do is, like, no brushes off the top of my head. I, I just don't. But, um, no, I'm actually not going to take that brush. I'm going to take this other one from BH Cosmetics, and I'm just going to blend this into my crease. But, um, it was such, um, it was a good read. I just couldn't connect with the writing style for myself. So, um... Moving on, let's talk about the characters. So I have a list of characters that I really want to talk about because we got feels. So let's start off with Priscilla. Um, Priscilla, obviously, is the main character <laughs> of the story. Um, and I think of all of the female characters that Tessa Afshar has written of, Priscilla is one of the most kindest, sweetest, purest hearts ever. And I mean that because I've read all of her books, literally read them all. Um, I'm still taking that same color into the crease, just... Um, making my crease out but she was such a pure girl and she dealt with such hardship she is the daughter of a roman general and her mother was a german germania i don't know how to pronounce it it'll be on the screen but um her mother was basically a slave and her father ended up falling in love with her mother he ended up marrying her because her brother, her stepbrother, or her half brother, excuse me, Valero, had gotten sick when he was young, and her father thought that he was going to die, so he married her mother to sire another heir. But she ended up being born, and in that, her brother grew to hate her. But we're gonna talk about her brother, anyways. So I have that down. Um, we're gonna do my brow bone. I'm going to be playing with a lot of the palettes from my sis, Stephanie. So if you haven't seen my unboxing, then definitely go see that. <laughs> yes. But I think I'm going to take this one. Let me see. Do I want to use this one? No, because these are like all mattes. What about this one? Nope. Not that one either. So we're going to play with this palette, which is the Lorac Pro Mega 2 palette, which is pretty much neutrals. Um, I call it the bridal palette. But I'm going to take um sugar which is this color here and put that under my brow with a big brush like this um but excuse me but yeah she's such a sweet hearted girl um she doesn't do anything you know to make you upset she had did have this one situation that she talked about with um akila which i thought was hilarious but she was well loved by her parents, um, but hated by her brother, unfortunately. And I felt like Priscilla was just a really, really strong character. Different from the others that she wrote about, um, that Tessa wrote about. Um, Priscilla did make mistakes, obviously. There was one huge mistake that's talked about in the prologue of the story. But um, I'm doing the same thing under this eye with the brow bone. But... Um, it wasn't, it wasn't massive because she didn't go through with what took place in the beginning of the story. But um, Priscilla definitely was a strong character. She's definitely in my top five for Tessa's um, female characters. Obviously, Rahab is going to be up there for me as well as Sarah. Um, I might even say that uh, Priscilla might be number three for me of all of the female characters that Tessa Afshar has written of. that That's my thoughts right there on Priscilla. I really enjoyed her as a character. She had a lot of growth. And, um, you know, she went with the flow of things concerning God. She was very, um, orient, like, I don't want to say godly oriented, but she definitely was mindful of other people. And, um, making sure that she was helping those in need like she would go hungry she wouldn't eat food she wouldn't drink wine she would save up all the things that she got in order to give to those in need and what got me was that even though her even though she was rich her brother treated her like trash and she was technically like in poverty so it was insane but um moving on let's talk about Akila. now Akila, i said this in the reading blog he reminded me too much of Simone from pearl in the sand only because he had that same sort of Mental mentality like Simone in the beginning concerning um 
Priscilla, as she is a Gentile, she's not one of God's chosen. So he felt like they shouldn't be eating with her. He felt like she should not have been able to um, hang with them and things like that. And he was just really just ugh, annoying at first. But I liked his character as the story went on and progressed. Because you could see that he was dealing with his own situations and issues. And what he went through was definitely heartbreaking. I didn't like the things that he went through with his family. His family was terrible to me. I, I could not stand his family. Um, next, I'm taking this. Uh, this is a NYX pencil. The Jumbo Pencil in Milk. Excuse me. I couldn't remember what it was. But I'm just going to take that and place it on my lids. But, um... Yeah, he was just annoying at the beginning with how he treated her and how he reacted towards her. Um, and even when he found out some of the mistakes that she made, he sort of got real cocky about it and forgot his own mistakes. So that's why he reminded me so much of Salmon. Um, he's such a gentleman as far as like protecting people. I mean, there was a few scenes in here in the book that I was just like, oh my god, he did that because... He made sure from the very beginning, even though he definitely had an instant attraction toward her, he didn't run on it, but he made sure that she was always watched after and cared for, which I appreciated um, and really enjoyed that aspect. He had a lot of growing and learning to do himself, even though he was a Jew, and um, he was just such a great man. Really, really great character, great man. Um, next, I'm going to talk about Ben... ben Benjamin, I think that's how you say that. It's Benjamin, but Y-A, so Benjamin. Um, he is basically, I think, the uncle of Akilah, and he takes in Akilah after his father does some, like, tragic stuff, which pisses me off. I don't want to why his father. His father pisses me off so much. His father pisses me off. Um, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm taking the Evolution, um, the Emily Edits, the Once palette. And I know in my unboxing, I said I didn't really know who Emily was. Clearly, I do. She's Emily Noel. She's a well-known YouTuber or beauty guru on um, YouTube on in the beauty community. So I didn't know that this was her palette until I looked it up on YouTube and was like, oh my god, she made a palette. Didn't know. So yeah. But I'm taking this palette. And I'm going in with the color, hopefully you guys can see, Grateful right here, which is like, it's sort of a mossy mint green I'm taking that color because I want to play with it. Um, so we're going to just take another brush, I guess, from BH Cosmetics, this one here, and pop that on. Um, do I want to go with that one? I really don't, but I don't have another palette out, and I don't feel like going with another one. So we're just going to go with it. We're going to go with it, and we're just going to move. Oh, yeah, that's actually really pretty. So we're going to go with it. Um, but Benjamin took in Ruf, not, not Rufus, excuse me, Rufus is another character. He took in Akila, and, um, you know, I really enjoyed his character. He was a funny old man. He definitely had that kind of grandpa vibe going with him, so I loved him. Um, moving on to Rufus, OMG, I loved Rufus. Rufus was amazing, and I'm putting this on, um, two-thirds of my lid, so you guys know. Just two-thirds of my lid is where this color is going. But, um, yeah, Rufus was amazing. He is the daughter, I mean the daughter. <laughs> he is the son of another character, which I'm going to talk about after. But, um, Rufus was definitely an amazing character for me. He definitely had a lot of sound wisdom to give to Akila. Um, he was very funny to me, and I enjoyed him. Um, as for his mother, his mother's name was Mary. Of course, you owe it. You gotta have a Mary somewhere in the in the books, okay? You just, there gotta be a Mary. If it ain't Mary, the mother of Jesus, you need another Mary, okay? But, um, trying to make sure I get that on there. But Mary was such a sweet person. She was a sweet woman. Opened up her doors to people, which I definitely loved. Um, she was willing to help those in need and... She was just a strong female secondary character for me. I enjoyed her a lot. Definitely like a mother figure to um, Priscilla for sure. Let me... Mm, I'm trying to see if I want to add any more. I really like... Oh, I love it. I'm trying to make this as neutral as possible, but still... Glammed up. 
but um that's that so let's go on to antonia 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 she is a wicked woman that ends up having a redemption towards the end um she was annoying she is in the very beginning of the book in the prologue and she goes all the way to the end and there were times i wanted to jump through the page and just duck on her face because she pissed me off with the things that she did i just i didn't under, i did not understand like why baby girl why she did certain things that kind of like irritated me i just didn't like it closing up this palette quickly and then i'm just going to blend out those edges again with that same chic color but um she annoyed me she did stupid things and i'm not going to talk about what she did but she pissed me off with what she did and what she tried to do um but i loved 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 how she learned from her her stupidity and her mistakes um she was sort of a enemy slash friend for priscilla which was great considering priscilla was such a pure-hearted person and antonia on the other hand was like this wicked woman that you're told to stay away from in the bible pretty much um so that's that moving on to i think her name is lolia i'll put it on the screen but she is a slave slash maid servant of um priscilla and she was such a funny woman i think she's an older woman but i loved her character she was very much um like a sister to priscilla she was definitely caring she made sure that priscilla was always well taken care of especially in the situation she was in living with her brother um but that's that moving on to appius apius i can't stand him priscilla x you don't really get much from him you only get like a few you get the prologue with information on him and then i think a few bits and pieces throughout the story but he never pops up physically in the story, but, like, the mention of him just pissed me off because he was one of those dudes that kind of, like, had... One of those guys that basically uses his talent to get the uh, the attention of women, and then he does what he does with these women, and then move on to the next. A player, basically. He pissed me off to the core. Could not stand him. Moving on to Senator Putin's... Putin's? Putin's? Don't know how to say his name. But the whole Putin's family, I love them. They were amazing. Um, they were very, very friendly with Priscilla from beginning to end. And I love the fact that they ended up becoming a part of God's people in the end. They were very helpful to Aquila. They were very helpful in protecting Priscilla from her brother's stupidity. And I just love them in general. Especially the daughter. His, the senator's daughter was like phenomenal to me. Funny as ever. Um, whereas Antonia was more of like that wicked friend you should never hang out with. The senator's daughter was like the kind of friend that you want to hang out with that makes you laugh and tries to make the best out of bad situations. So I love that. Um, Caesar Claudius, Claudius, excuse me, which is Antonia's uncle, um, the emperor basically of Rome. I don't know how I feel about him. Um, I'm sorry, I'm supposed to be moving on to the next step. I'm going to go in with, um... I want a brown color so i'm taking this tartlet palette that sift that my sister sent me and i'm gonna take this brown shade right here don't want to take that brown don't want to take a green um i'm thinking if i want to do green instead on the eyes now that i'm looking but um yeah he was annoying to me like highly annoying um I'm going to go with a green first and then go with the brown. So the brown, the green I'm going to go with is back in the Lorac Pro palette and it's called Forest. So this green right here I'm taking. And I'm going to take that on another fluffy brush, just a random fluffy brush and pop that on that. Ooh, that might be a little dark now that I'm thinking about it. Again, this is on the fly. Um, Let me look at the cover real quick because I don't know if I want to play with that one. <laughs> No, I don't want that color. So, I'm going to wipe my brush on my lap. And I'm actually going to go. It's kind of hard to decide what color I want to go with. I really want a teal color. But I think I'm going to try this color here. Let's see. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go with Corduroy in that same Emily Wants palette. Which is this color here. This Corduroy. Gorgeous color. But, um, he just, I don't, he was annoying to me at first. I mean, he still was very annoying from beginning to end. But there was just something about his character that I couldn't really, I don't know. It's hard to explain how I feel about Claudius. Um, definitely a man that doesn't play with women's stupid games, which I like that about him. 
But I also felt that sometimes he was just harsh and being ignorant. Um, you know, a man scorned that didn't know how to deal with his emotions and allowed other people to persuade him and sway his mind on certain things. So I didn't care for that as far as that goes with him. But I mean, he's the emperor. So whatever I guess the emperor says happens. I don't know. Um, so moving on to Marcus, um, Marcus is a little boy about eight, nine years old that is a runaway that they end up finding and I love him so much. He is so stinking cute and adorable and he is such a sweet boy. Um, he, he, his, whoo, his storyline was crazy. I will say the stuff that he witnessed. I wouldn't would I would not wish that on any child. Um this boy was on the run for his life because of his uncle and I'm not even going to really get into depth cuz I'm you, you got to read the story, but um the stuff he went through was crazy. So as you can see, I'm just putting it on the outer third of my eye and blending it in as best as I can before I switch brushes. Um but I actually like the way that looks. That's actually really pretty. Like I said, this is on the fly. I, I didn't even think of a look, so we just flowing with it. But, um, yeah, Marcus was a sweet kid. I enjoyed him a lot. Um, and he had such a good head on his shoulder. He was very proper. Um, meaning that even though he was a runaway, he didn't act like most kids would have in the streets. Um, you definitely could tell that he was well educated, but I enjoyed his character, especially some of the things when it came to picking between um, Priscilla and Aquila over the riches. My heart melted during that scene. Um, let's talk about Valero. Valero, Valero, Valero. The brother I can't stand because he is terrible. I, Valero was a terrible brother, like. From start to finish he was terrible um okay i'm just gonna take a little bit of that on the brush so that i can blend it out like that yeah i'm just blending it out so it's not too harsh but um valero was like i said priscilla's brother her half brother um he was the son of the general and some high lady or something like that. And he was very bitter from the very beginning. You know, he was upset with his father. One, because his father... He feels like his father married beneath his station and marrying um, Priscilla's mother since she was a slave. So he always resented his father. And because he resented his father in that, he always resented his sister. Um, which I think if it was a boy, it would have been ten times worse, like, ten times worse for Priscilla if she was a boy. But, um, I'm trying to just blend this out as best as I can. Sometimes blending is, like, the most annoying step in my makeup looks. Because you just spend so much time blending it out that you're just, like, over it. But, um... Yeah, he was very bitter, and he's mean towards Priscilla. He treats her like horse dung, basically, literally. Um, and if he could, he would hide her away. He only goes to her when he needs something. There was a, a part in the book when he wanted to basically force her to be with this guy named Quintus because he wanted to try to buy some property from Quintus. And I was just like, are you kidding me? Like, you treat her like crap. You don't give her good clothes. You don't really feed her. You make her do manual labor. Which, it sounds like, okay, that's normal. But back in that time, Roman women, especially those who had wealth and money, didn't have to do that. So for her to have all this wealth and stuff and didn't really get a chance to utilize it and had to really learn things on her own, I'm just like, he's trash. Like, he was a trash brother. I don't care what nobody says. That man was trash to me. Um, okay. Now, going back into, I think, this palette, right? Back into the Tartlet palette. I'm going to take this color, Dreamer, here, which is a brown. 
and I'm going to use that to blend it out more in the crease and I'm going to go with this brush here but um yeah he pissed me off like I don't I don't I don't care he pissed me off um that might not work I might have to go with a deeper color but we're going to keep it going anyway for now with that oh wait no that actually might work okay we're just going to blend it in there but um I don't know, he just was annoying, and instead of taking care of his sister, he kind of was just like, no, I don't care, I'm wealthy, you're not, um, you're beneath me type of stuff, and I, I didn't like that, especially since that was his younger sister, I felt like he should have been more of a brother and protected her, and really loved on her, but he chose not to do that. I'm just looking at my camera, because my camera shuts off after 40 minutes, I think it is. So I want to make sure I'm still recording. But, um, that is it pretty much for the characters that I want to discuss. So let's go into plot. So the plot for this is actually really good. It follows a lot of different things, which was interesting to say the least. Because you have the main plot concerning Priscilla um, and someone trying to kill her, which I thought was insane. That someone was trying to kill her. And she didn't even realize somebody was trying to kill her. <laughs> um, the one who realized it was Akilah. Um, and then you have the storyline with Akilah and his family situation, which tragic. I kind of wish there was a sort of better way of ending that relationship with his family. Um, because... I mean, his his family betrayed him to the core. His father betrayed him, his brother betrayed him, and his betrothed betrayed him in such the craziest way. And the reason why is because, okay, there were Jews, but you know back then the, the Jews were divided. There were the Jews that believed in God, and then there were those who believed in um, Jesus as a Messiah. His father, was, his father was one of those Jews that did not believe that Jesus was a Messiah. So he was basically trying to get Aquila to... Um, denounce his belief in Jesus and Aquila wasn't having it and there was a part that Aquila said that um is in the bible somewhere I don't know where if I can remember it or think of it I'll put it on the screen where Jesus said that he came to divide families and um stuff like that because back then the families were really divided and you can definitely see the divide between Priscilla and her family and then Aquila and his family and they both had a lot of family hurt they both had a lot of hurt from their exes so they definitely had to learn to overcome that um themselves to be in a good relationship um so you have the plot with his family the plot with someone trying to murder her um Priscilla um and then you have the plot concerning Marcus which like I said was insane because Marcus he was on the run the little boy was only eight nine years old and he was on the run for his life okay there was a price on his head which was crazy to me like super super crazy i'm sorry you guys i'm like trying to see i feel like i'm weird right now because i don't have my glasses on so yeah if you see me looking here it's because i want to see how it looks on the camera but i'm looking here to talk to you guys i'm looking down to look in my mirror but um you know it's 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 a good plot nonetheless um a lot goes on but it's all good like it's all written well I think I'm gonna leave it here because I kind of like the way that looks. Um, I don't want it too green, too mint, or too dark. So we're gonna leave it there and I'm just going to get a big blending brush and blend it. So we're going to go with this big fluffy brush here and just blend. I'm gonna take my crease color that I had and just blend it all out. I might go back in with that green though, just a little bit more. But, um,. Yeah, the plot for me was excellent. I loved everything about the plot from beginning to end. Yeah, I'm going to go back in with this brush here. Back into that corduroy color. And not a heavy amount, literally like a dab. I don't know if you guys can see how much I got. Just that little bit. Just to pop it into the crease. Yeah, just like that. I want it in the crease. Like I said, it's been so long since I've done makeup, you guys, on myself. So, I'm actually having fun with this. But, um...
I'm gonna have to blend out that mint back on my eyes, but there we go. Um, never tug. Okay, what I'm about to do, I don't advise my clients ever to do this, but I do it on myself just because I'm a little difficult. So I gently pull up so I can blend out better, but never do that. I, I don't suggest ever pulling on the skin around your eyes ever, okay? <clears throat> but, um,. <clears throat> Yeah, that, that plot with Marcus was, like, epic for me. It was epic and insane and just everything. Now, oh, the character I forgot was Paul, because obviously Paul lives in this story, right? So we're going to talk about Paul real quick before I move into the romance and relationships. So, Paul, for me, he was okay. You know, okay. Um, If you guys have been following for a minute, you know my feelings about and how she writes Paul. Um, I don't care for how Paul was written in Thief of Corinth. There's just something about it I didn't care for. Um, I liked Paul a lot better in Bread of Angels. Paul in this one just was like literally a normal guy. <laughs> like there was really not much wisdom coming from him which kind of killed me because I was expecting it. But um, there was not much from him wisdom wise that... It just wasn't, I don't know. I'm going back into this palette, excuse me, you guys, with um, this color here called Apartment. I feel like it's missing something. And it, um, hopefully this looks great when I'm done. We'll see. But I'm going back in with that. And just to deepen up the outer section just a bit. Um... I think that's it right there but um yeah I didn't care for him too much and if I had to pick he's this is my second favorite book concerning Paul um definitely Bread of Angel will still win for me but I didn't really care for Paul in this um I mean you got to see him as a normal guy working with leather and building tents pretty much <laughs> But, um, you know, Paul was great as far as, like, helping Priscilla and Aquila open up in their marriage. That was pretty much all I got from Paul, honestly. Like, that that was it, nothing else. Um, so, yeah. I'm just trying to make sure this is blended out well. And you see me looking up because I'm looking into the mirror to make sure it's evened out. Um, but, yeah. But, yeah, those are my feelings. Um, so I think that's about it, plot-wise. Let me just blend all this back out now. Um, so I guess I can go on to the romance. Now, the romance for me was life. It was everything. I thought Akila and Priscilla were the cutest couple ever. Um, definitely one of my favorite couples, by far. Um, definitely, it gotta be up there after, you know, Rahab and Zamon, because those two are my favorite. Definitely probably my third favorite couple of all the books that she has written. I'm looking. Yeah, my third favorite couple of all the couples she's written. Um, because obviously we have Rahab and Salmon. I love them two together. And then we have Sarah and Darius from the duology. Love them. But um, my third favorite couple, I really just love the bond that they had. There was definitely an instant attraction for the two of them, but they did not rush into anything. And even the first time that um, Akila had proposed to her, there was some situations going on with that. So I thought that was amazing. And yes, he proposed to her the first time and she said, er, skirt, nope. <laughs> but there was a reason why she said no. And then it led to Akila being real petty and stupid about some things. So, you know, that's how that goes. Um, but I just, I love the two of them together and the way they fell for one another and their relationship you could tell that their their love that they had for each other was real it wasn't a fake you know romance it was real love real affection real emotions and i definitely appreciated that for the two of them um and you can definitely see them working together to help with the gospel and the kingdom of god so i love that the most um as far as like other relationships um, the relationship between Antonia and Priscilla, like I said, 
is it started off ugly but it ended off really well they became the best of friends which you have to read the story to understand what happens because something happens in antonia's life that kind of switches everything around it was good but their friendship was really great i love rufus rufus is like the best freaking guy ever he was the best friend for Akila because he always had smart things to say to Akila and popped Akila in the face with his words and I was like yes do it Rufus but um we have that I'm going to pause the camera real quick and then restart it up